Hi all. In the last video, I showed you how to do multi-group test analysis. In this video, the topic is multi-group CFA. The example I'm going to use is based on a study by Naglary and Jensen's published in 1987. In this study, they assessed the factorial invariance between Caucasian and African-American children using data collected via the Kaufman Assessment Battery for Children. In the CFA model, there are two latent factors measured by eight variables. Three measured variables are the indicators of sequential processing, hand movement, number recall, and word order. The five indicators of simultaneous processing are just dot closure, triangles, matrix analogies, spatial memory, and photo series. Head movement and just dot closure are the reference variables for the two latent factors, respectively. If you remember from the example of the path analysis, we take three steps in multi-group comparison. In step one, we test whether the model is tenable for individual groups, make justified modifications when needed to improve model fit. In step two, we test model fit for all groups combined and compare the model chi-square of the unconstrained model with that of the constrained model. If there is no significant difference in the model fit of the constrained and the unconstrained models, we can conclude that the model fits all groups equally well, and there's no significant difference in the model parameters between groups. If there is a significant difference between the constrained model and the unconstrained model, in the last step, we test the model parameters one at a time based on the modification indices and identify significant differences between groups. Back to our example, I have the summary data files for both white and black groups in which the variable standard deviations and the correlation matrix are provided. I created M plus command files to test the CFA models for individual groups. Nothing is out of ordinary here. The only reminder is that I usually request the display of modification indices with a chi-square reduction of 4 or higher because the critical chi-square value is 3.84 when the degrees freedom is 1. In other words, I want to see only the modifications that are statistically significant. Group 1 was Caucasian children and the fit indices in the L profile are not so good. I need to see whether there are possible changes in order to improve the model. Based on the model modification indices, adding a correlation between the error terms of word and number could reduce the model chi-square by 8.475. Since they are two of the indicators measuring sequential processing, I decide to add this change to my command file. Save and run the command file again. We can see that the model fit is getting better, but not enough yet. Take a look at the modification indices. You can see that the one feasible suggestion is to add a correlation between the error terms of photo and gestalt. Both are indicators of simultaneous processing. Let's make this change in the command file. Now we've reached good model fit indices. The model chi-score is 20.98 with a degrees freedom 17. The RMSEA is 0.05. CFI is 0.97 and the SRMR is 0 0.06. Keep in mind that we got a model of good fit for the white group only after making the two changes to the model structure. Group two was African-American children. 
running this initial model, and the results show that the CFA model fit black children much better than the white children. If you still want to improve the model fit, the only possible change is to add a correlation between the error terms of triangle and gestalt. This change is to the African-American group only. Now we have completed the first step and made changes to the individual groups. In the second step, we combine the two groups together. First, remember to create a data file that have the combined data from all groups together, starting from the information of group one, then the data of group two, until you reach the last group. In the command file, remember to use the keyword ngroup to specify the number of groups and name each group accordingly. In the analysis block, specify type equals m group. Things got a bit complicated in the model section. Please remember that when running multi-group comparisons, by default, m plus assumes that the estimated factor loadings are equal across all groups. In order to have an unconstrained model, we have to set the factor loadings free. To do this, in the model section, you first specify the CFA structure and clearly label your reference variables by adding at one following the name of the reference variables. For sequential processing, hand is the reference variable, and I write this hand at one. For simultaneous processing, Gestalt is the reference variable, and I write Gestalt at 1. Next, I repeat the same model structure for individual groups. This is why you see two more model blocks. Model G1 is for group 1, and model G2 is for group 2. Additionally, within each of the group blocks, I need to add the modifications that were made in step one to that group. For example, for white children, we added correlations, covariances between two pairs of indicators, number with word, photo with gestalt. They need to be included in model G1. For group two, the black group, one modification was made that added correlation between chest dot and triangle. And it should be included for model two. Always make sure all details are taken care of before you save and run. You can see in the output file, the model fit indices are pretty good. And the overall model chi-square is the sum of the chi-squares of the two individual groups. Once you have the unconstrained model, it is not hard to make it into a constraint model. All you need to do is to remove the repeated model structure from model G1 and model G2. Repeating the model structure means that you want the M plus to estimate the parameter values independently for each group. That is why we do it in the unconstrained models. Without repeating the model structure, we are staying with the default of M+, setting equality constraint on corresponding factor loadings across groups, which is needed for the constraint model. Nonetheless, I still need to have the model G1 and the model G2 blocks for keeping the changes I made for individual groups. Save the changes and run the analysis. In the output file, you can see that for the constraint model, the model chi-score is 54.24, which is not significant, partly due to the small sample size. RMSEA is roughly with the guideline values, but both CFI 
and SRMR needs to be better. The chi-square difference between the unconstrained and the constrained model is 15.69, which is statistically significant with a degrees freedom of 6. This finding suggests that the CFA model does not fit children in the two ratio groups equally well. In step 3, we go to the modification indices of the constraint model. One acceptable suggestion is to release the loading between simultaneous and spatial. You can tell by this line, simultaneous by spatial being repeated for both groups. While we already had a loading from simultaneous processing, to spatial memory in the model. In other words, spatial is already an indicator of simultaneous processing. What we need to do is to simply repeat this relationship in model G1 and model G2 blocks to set it free from equality constraint. Run the analysis after making the changes. This time, the model chi-score decreased to 42.1. The other model fit indices are good too. And there is no further modification indices to use. We completed this multi-group analysis and conclude that the spatial memory measured simultaneous processing differently for white and black children. For white children, the standardized factor loading from simultaneous processing to spatial memory is 0 0.56. For black children, the same standardized factor loading between simultaneous and spatial is 0 0.72. Based on the values of the factor loadings, it is clear that simultaneous processing contributed significantly more to the spatial memory of black children than to that of the white children. The equality constraint on the other seven factor loadings remained, meaning they are invariant between the two populations.